Okay, well, let's just um, let's worship the Lord. You kids ready? Yeah? That's right. <laughs> All right, why don't we um, close our eyes? You kids want to close your eyes? Big kids want to close your eyes? All right, Jesus, we just ask you to come. We know you're here, but we want to feel you, encounter you, hear you speak to us. And so we just give this moment to you, and we just um, thank you that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And so we give the atmosphere over, our hearts, our minds, all anxiety, fear, distraction, every weight. It just goes, and I just thank you for heaven coming and being here on earth with us. Let's just speak healing over everyone, too, in Jesus' name, healing. Hallelujah. Let's pray in the spirit a little bit. Can we just pray in the spirit, get the engine revved? That's it. That's it. Ronda de Baranda de Gasangro to the Shingra da de Babrosso to the Baba Rata de Day Gila Rasatu Lorosso to the Babraca de Day In the Rando de Garando de Day Shindala Rasutu Roco to Ramamba de Day Oh Rasakarabara da Baba Barada praying, my kids praying, Shu Roto Corande de Barasse de Day Baba. Ondo ro 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 shura de 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 singra mande de la rara de de papa. Oh rosa coro do ro de shangra na de de brasa sa sa. We yield, we yield the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. We forbid every wet blanket, every tired, weary holiday vacation, sleepy hollow. Out it goes in Jesus' name. And we speak the fire of his presence to burn in this room right now in Jesus' name. We build ourselves up in our most holy faith right now. That's it. Oh, come on, let's just let a groan of intercession come out of our bellies tonight. Oh, na 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 Oh, we clear the atmosphere. His name is Jesus. His name is Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God. His name is Jesus. Is Jesus. Let's lift him up. His name.
depression just come out of your belly. Oh, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful.
keep saying his name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful counselor. Oh my God. His name.
Come on, we can go higher. We can go wider. Come on. <laughs> Come on, let those crazy tongues come out of you. Riva 
nations kneel, glorify the Lord, let all the earth tremble for He comes, He will judge the living and the dead. The Son of trumpet sound every knee will bow and tongue confess the name above all names his name is Jesus we worship his name is Jesus holy his name is Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God. His name is Jesus. We worship you. His name is
to take away from anything he's doing right now. So why don't we just all, whether you're watching at home or you're in this room right now, this moment, I just want you to, if you don't already have your eyes closed, I just want you to close your eyes. The Spirit of the Lord is here right now, the person of God. And it's got a very strong sense that he's wanting to speak to each person, even the kids. It's just kids, we're just going to close our eyes right now. Jesus is wanting to speak to us. I just want you to close your eyes in this moment. I want you to just see through the darkness of the closed eyelids. I want you to see Jesus standing in front of you. You know, God's got a lot of things to say. Sometimes we make the mistakes of not hearing him. Not giving him space to speak. Not giving him space to show us things. Just take a moment right now. What is it, God, that you want to show me? What is it that you're telling me right now? It might be a single word. It might be a sentence. It might be a download. It might be an image. It might be breakthrough. It might be counseling. It might be vision. It might be an answer. It might just be a whisper of intimacy. But Jesus, what do you want to say to me right now? I just need to be like Samuel sometimes. Here I am, Lord, speak. Here I am. Here I am, speak to me. I want to hear your voice. Show me the way. Show me your heart. Jesus, speak. Jesus, speak to us. And I, mighty God, friend of mine. We sometimes worship like this takes you through the praise of high praises and into worship and out into atmospheres where it feels like you step out of an elevator and into the green fields of heaven. And if you've ever experienced that before, but when we worship him, we're supposed to go places in his heart. We're supposed to ascend to heavenly places. Sometimes I found myself standing in green pastures next to a river of crystal clear water. And I know I'm not on earth anymore. What does he want to show you? Where does he want to take you? Take us to places of intimacy, God. Mark us in moments. Shift our hearts. Come on, we want to be, we want to be those that are fierce warriors, but fierce lovers. Can't just be fierce out of muscle memory and willpower. I've got to have this passion of intimacy that's been marked in moments with him. Where I've gone past just mere rooms filled with amazing worship and I've gone to heavenly places with him. Sometimes he's just wanting to set us free in a moment, what would have taken years of counseling and deliverance. Sometimes. He's wanting to show us why we're here and what he has for us. He's constantly has a joy to reveal things that he's prepared for us in this life. We want to find those things in him. What do you want to say to me, God? Sometimes he'll give us little course corrections. Hey, you're off the path a little bit back over this way. And that's actually really healthy. It's healthy to hear that. Come back to where I made you to be walking. Don't wander. Don't get off track. It's so much better over here with me. <laughs> intimacy is the way of the kingdom. If I have intimacy, I'm unstoppable. If I see his eyes, I'll never be shut down. If I hear his voice, I'll never get lost. What are you saying to me, God? Feel your heart to me. I want to know. I want to know. Sometimes he shows 
shows you pictures. Sometimes he gives you words. Sometimes he hugs you. I haven't told anyone this except my wife. I actually forgot to tell her because there was so much happening. But just last week, we were in a moment of worship, prayer. Bex was actually worshiping next to me. I was sitting down on the sofa. She was standing up.
teenagers right now, you're seeing visions, you're hearing things, sometimes he's even telling you things, you need to do this, I want you to do this, I want you to do this particular thing, I want you to go to this place, I want you to give that particular thing, I want you to, I want you to start preparing for this thing over here. I'll never forget one time I was in a, was in a service, I looked up and my eyes were closed and I was just deep in worship. I was in the back of the church, just minding my business. And I saw a photo frame way up there. And it kind of came down in like a spiral circular kind of fashion and it sat right in front of me. And I literally saw, this was when I was in New Zealand, I was a young man in my early 20s. And I literally saw my future wife. I couldn't see her face, but I saw she was blonde. And I saw little kids and I saw her standing on the front lawn and it, I could tell it was a property in the United States. Uh, the house properties are just laid out differently here. See, God can show you your future. He can give you hopes and dreams. We've moved on. You can't bring your old muscle memory here. Just lift up your hands. Close your eyes. I really just sense the descending presence of Jesus just falling on you right now. Come on. The descending. He's just literally descending in the truth like a mist, like a cloud. It's coming like waves. His heart, his goodness, his acceptance of your life, his peace to every turmoil thought, every chaos, every every distraction, his power, his power, his resources to seize him, his love. Jesus hugs like nobody else. Can I just say that again? Jesus hugs like nobody else. Stop. 
waiting for that one time we have a prayer altar call and we can get preacher to lay hands on us. How about we just start lifting up our hands and pulling heaven down? And there's a strong presence of Jesus here. He's turned up for you. He's turned up for you. As much as he loves Pastor Bex and I, he didn't just come for us, he came for you. Do you know that? He's, he's come for you to meet you. You're the most important person in the room. He came for you. Just receive. Just receive. Come on. If you know what's good for you, just receive. Ooh. Here's the thing. You know, you know what Jesus said to me once? He goes, you can have as much of me as you want. You can have as much of me as you want. He said, you can stand as close to the throne in heaven as you want. How close do you want to stand to me on earth? Come on, somebody. I'm here to be unusual. I've been marked by Jesus. I am a strange Christian. I'm a zealous one. It's because I've found his love and his love has found me. And I'm not prepared to settle for church. I want his heart. And when I find his heart, that's going to cause me to be a different individual. My response is going to be abnormal. My response is going to say, all of you for all of me, deal. Deal. That's a good deal. Come on, let him just fall on you right now. Let him just fall on you. I can walk around and lay hands on you. But it's better if you could pull heaven down into your arms. Pull heaven down into your arms right now. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. More, God. More. Increase your presence right now. Increase. I'm not going to sit mediocre. I'm going to become passionate. I'm going to become zealous. I'm going to become someone that's so hungry that it just isn't enough that what you did on Sunday isn't enough for Wednesday anymore. I'm going to keep pulling on you and pulling on you and pulling on you until I'm just a total addict looking for my next encounter with your love, looking for my next encounter with your presence because mediocre church is not what I came for. I came for your heart. And so I'm hungry now beyond what I'm supposed to look like and how I'm supposed to behave. I want more of you. I want all of you. How, can, how far can this go? How far can this go? I'm going to pull on you and place a demand on you until something shifts. Because I know when something shifts, all that's going to happen is it's going to increase my capacity so next time I can have more of you. You know what Holy Spirit showed me when I was growing up in Him? I'm still growing up in Him. I'm going to be growing up in Him for the rest of my life. And when we get to heaven, I'm going to figure out that I'm going to guess right now that we will get there and realize that we've got just the beginning of the introduction that we figured out that we thought we knew about God and we're all just beginners. <laughs> but he showed me once that your spirit is like this tall picture um, vase. And, and he, what he showed me, it looked like one of those really long, tall vases that they had back in the time when Jesus was around. But he, but he showed it to me, he said, most people, they start with a really little one really small and he said and as they pull on me more every time they pull on me it grows a little bit your capacity to house his presence increases the question is is how much is your capacity and how willing are you let it how willing are you to let it grow to build to increase see i want to become a habitation the reason that peter's shadow healed the sick wasn't because the sun was casting a shadow from his body to the ground, but because the vessel inside him, housing Holy Spirit, was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and the atmosphere around Peter was touching people. It wasn't Peter's cologne. It was that he got so hungry for intimacy with the Spirit and person of Jesus 
that there was more than enough flowing around him. That when people came around him, they started thinking clear, their bodies started getting healed, things started shifting, atmospheres, mindsets started changing. What does it look like to be so hungry that I don't care what people think about how I look? May we be a house that doesn't care what people think about how we look. So hungry that all we want is just to have more of Him. What does it look like to have a real upper room? A real upper room where we get so unified on one thing and that one thing is encounters of intimacy that change all of us and change environments and regions and cities. But before we talk big swelling words, how big is the vessel inside of me? Jesus, I need more of you. I need more of you. Before I save the world, I need you to save me again. I need you to save me again. I need you to wash me over. I need you to just banish every dark assignment that's come against my mind. Everything that's tried to rise up and seed a rebellion a passive rebellion against what you are and who you are and where you've planted me over my life. I need you to rise up on the inside of me, God. I need you to rise up on the inside of me and shift me. So instead of not wanting to read your word, I want to read your word. Instead of not wanting to be in your presence and distract myself with movies and Facebook, I want to be in your presence more than all those things. God, instead of needing to find the next social event, all I want to do is go and be hidden under my mattress so that I can find who you are again. Over and over and over and over again. What does an upper room look like? It doesn't look like, even though I think the church in Texas is amazing, I'm not referring to them. It doesn't look like the next album. It looks like the next encounter. Jesus. Jesus, I want, I want more of you. I want more of you. See, guys, can I give you a secret? Some of you have heard me talking about, oh, he talks about having dreams of heaven and dreams where he, God shows them things in the night, spiritual encounters. Yeah, let, let me tell you the secret. I seek him while I'm awake. I spend hours and hours and hours of my life just driving around. I'll never forget when he asked me to give up the gym so I just spend an hour every day after work praying that the Holy Ghost driving around my city. And I did that for over a decade, probably a couple of decades. What are you willing to give up? I want him more than anything. That's why we haven't conformed to a popular church model. We want heaven. We want the heart of Jesus. It doesn't matter if people don't like it. It matters if he likes that I like it. Say something right now because there's someone in here. I don't know who you are, but 
Like, well, you might be watching online, I'm not sure, but I'm just feeling the Holy Spirit. There's someone in here that feels so disconnected from God right now, and you feel like almost like you know you should be connected with God, but you just feel so out of place. You feel you feel a little scared and freaked out because it's like, I'm not feeling this. Why not? Listen, I'm gonna give you your homework. Not that I'm asking you to strive, but I'm gonna tell you where it's at. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. The bride to be. She loses, she's in the garden with the groom. And all of a sudden the groom disappears. And she can't find him and she's standing there by herself. Going, what am I doing here? I'm standing here by myself. He's gone. What happened? And, and see, on one hand, if you've got an orphan mentality, which all of us have struggled with at different times in our lives, it's not something we live in, it's something we grow out of, by the way. If you've got an orphan mentality, you're going to say, well, God's rejected me, I've done something wrong. It's good for everyone else, and the devil's going to get in on that action and say, well, it's not for you. You should just give up. These people are crazy. But the reality is, is you want exactly what I'm talking about. You want this. And then the bride in Song of Solomon, she makes this a really smart decision. She starts running through the garden. She says, I will search all through the night. I am going to run through every corner of this garden. I am going to find my groom. And when I find him, I'm not going to let him go. I am going to search all through the night. What does the night represent? It represents moments of darkness. It represents moments of confusion, moments of isolation, moments of feeling like you're cut off. I'm gonna search all through the moment in my life where I feel I'm disconnected from God. I'm not gonna leave it as a sign of rejection. I'm gonna see it as an invitation to chase. I'm not gonna allow the way I feel to pigeonhole me and to relegate me into this place of being an orphan that has nowhere to go. No, I know I'm loved because he said, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I've got a place to be and I'm going to start chasing them down. Well, I can hear you thinking to yourself, well, it's because I haven't been spending time with God and doing all the stuff I know to do. So, while that's really important, that doesn't mean you're disqualified. That's the life of hell. You need to let that go for right now. So I'm going to search all through the night. I'm going to run and run and run and run. I'm going to find him and I'm going to lay hold of him. I'm never going to let him lose sight of me again. I'm never going to lose sight of him. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on. Breathe in the presence of Jesus. The bridegroom has not rejected you. He's actually, check this out, he's actually provoking you to intimacy. He's provoking you to pursue because even God wants to be chased and valued. Jesus literally said, never will I leave you nor forsake you. So has he really gone? No, it's just the darkness of your disconnect has made you feel like he's rejected you, but he's never, ever rejected you. No height, no depth, no, eight, no length, no breadth, no angel, no demon. Nothing in heaven, nothing in hell can separate you from the love of God. So that feeling is an illusion. It's a mirage of your emotions and your psyche. And I'm telling you, get something up on the inside of you that rises up and says, you know what? I'm going to chase God's heart. I'm going to come after him until I find him. And when I find him, I'm never letting go because I was made to thrive in His presence. I've never been happier than when I'm with Him. <laughs> Come on. Come on. See, you know what we really need to do in this, in this new building? We need to get in so much accord on this that when we walk through the doors, 20 minutes early because we're so hungry for God. I know we have work, there's grace on that, I'm not talking about that. But when we show up with a passion 
I'm not just going to church because what they do is go to church because they're Christians. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, what does it look like to say, I'm going to the church family place that I attend to meet God. And I'm going yeah. to a place where other people are coming for the same thing. And the minute the first key is struck on the keyboard, the minute the first hands are raised, heaven comes running into the room where by, by 30, 40 minutes in, there's thick clouds filling the room. People are having encounters. People are being taken up to heaven. People are being shown answers. People are being shown uh, things about their purpose, their destiny. People are seeing miracles happen, popping straight out of the cloud. What does it look like for a house of believers to become so determined? I'm grateful we have a small house. There's less people to get on the same page. All I need is people on the same page and we can have encounters. All we need to be is a little hungry. You've got to look at it from God's point of view. The Bible says that the eye of the Lord roams to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom he could show the strong on their behalf. <laughs> Do you know what that means? It means that God is scanning the whole world. And not that I'm here to be in any way competitive, elitist, or in any way ridicule anyone else's faith. But here's where I'm at. And here's where I'm proposing you and all of us to be at as a family. And everyone watching online. I know we've got a big church family out there. There's more people that watch us around different parts of the country and the world than even get to this building. We just know that because of the feedback that comes in. There's people out there that value what we're, what we're pouring out here. But this is where we're at. If 98% of all the other believers want to live at mediocre level and sing three monotone songs that they barely believe and make their way through sermons and announcements while they plan their lunches and dinners and breakfasts, then it doesn't take much for us to get to a place in God where we can come in hungry and ravenous and ready to pull and all of a sudden a flame and a plume of incense comes up out of this little house and everywhere that God is looking and He's not seeing incense and all of a sudden there in Anaheim, California there starts to come up an incense before the throne of God and He says, I can visit there I can show myself great there I can manifest there I can come in ways that they've not seen before. All it takes is agreement. All it takes is being in one place and in one accord. And the Spirit of God can come and He can shift lives. He can shift atmospheres. People can have their families shifted. Families changed. They can get saved. They can get healed. See, we don't need the fame of church to spread. We need the fame of Jesus to spread. Yes. What if mediocre church out there is not normal and this is normal? Yes. For 12 years I've been in this nation and I've had people look at me saying, you're intense, you're too hardcore. And I'm not, I'm normal. If anything, I'm not enough. If anything, I'm not in enough. I can't benchmark yet next to those who gave their lives in the Colosseum and wouldn't bow and give up the name of Jesus. I'm not enough. He deserves more. But what does it look like for a house to come into such focus? that we stop letting the little three and a half foot demons that try and wear us out during the week cause us to turn up to church with no hunger for God. The little trivial family dramas that wear us out during the week and the friends and all the silly stuff on social media and politics and finances and all the things that try and rally to be the gods that rule us, wear us out where we turn up in church with nothing to give and barely being breathing in our spirit. What does it look like 
if we stop giving them lordship and we start bowing to one king and we start turning up in our bedroom hungry before we turn up in a building hungry. Jesus. Jesus. I want to hear heaven erupting and interrupting our meetings and services. We're not here to run programs. We're here to ascend in our praise and our worship, the cries from our heart, the capacity of our spirits so that heaven can interrupt us and mark us. Jesus, we want you. We want you, God. Jesus' name. What does it look like where the atmosphere of heaven is so strong because all of us are pulling, not just existing, on heaven. What does it look like where everyone in the room gets healed? What does it look like when people in neighboring buildings get healed that weren't even attending? And they come next door and said, I felt a wave of something go through the building and my arm was healed. My broken body was healed. The disease left my body. Guys, we are not living at the apex of Christianity. I've watched some great leaders say we're at the greatest, strongest time of the church. Now, let me tell you about some of the great, strong times of the church. Men and women of God who literally got, I, there's this woman, I believe it was a woman or a man. I honestly can't remember. It's one of the two. There's no others. So <laughs> it's because there's so many stories in my head that I've seen and heard over the, over the years. But there was a woman near the early part of the, the last century. I believe it was a woman. She got on a train to go through England, woman of God. As her train carriage went through towns and villages, it is documented that the spirit of conviction waved out into those towns and villages and people walking in the streets as the train went by, not knowing who was in the train, were getting on their knees in the streets and in the pavements, in the factories and calling on repentance, calling on God to save them. I heard of a man of God who, again, early in, the, early in that uh, period of time, uh, early of last century, early 1900s, he toured a factory. He was taken into a factory and he didn't preach, he didn't open his mouth. He simply walked into the building, big factory, hundreds of workers. Every single worker was on their knees, weeping, asking Jesus to forgive them. We're not at the apex we're just sophisticated. What does it look like that we would become so hungry for the person of God and not the idea of Him? For intimacy, not just forgiveness. Come on. Come on. You could change this nation. You could change this nation. We could pull on heaven in such a way that this whole state gets wrecked by Jesus. What does it look like to change my lifestyle so that I become a hungry one? So that I become a thirsty one? I'm personally working on some lifestyle changes so I can spend more and more and more time with them. I have to. I have to. Cross the line. There's no other choice for me. What about you? What does it look like? The moment we lift our hands and heaven responds, He's here. You know, if most churches are lucky, they'll spend 20, 30 minutes and the glory shows up for a few moments. A couple of teardrops come out and people feel comforted that God still loves them. But what does it look like for a house that lifts its hands and begin to worship? And the moment our vocal cords release the first note, heaven comes. Where are we at from that moment 20 minutes into worship? Where are we at 30 minutes in? Where are we at 40 minutes in? What happens when three hours later we don't even realise that three hours passed and heaven's come and people have been encountered by the Spirit and person of God?
trying to provoke you because there's so much more than what we've got to and progressed to. We can go higher, deeper, further. We're not crazy. We're just getting started. (laughs) (laughs) We're not too intense. We're not intense enough. (laughs) Come on. Come on. What does it look like? We worship you. Come on, just let him respond. Just let him respond. Just let what I've been saying be the cry of your heart to him. Just look up right now in the eye of your heart, your spiritual vision. Just look up at God and say, that's what I want, God. Make me an instrument of worship. Make me a vessel of honor. Fill me with fire, God. Cause me to be zealous for your house. Like Jesus, when the disciples figured out that actually the book of Isaiah was being played out in his house, when he made that whip and drove all the traders and said, this is not the way my house was ever designed to be. It wasn't designed to be a house of industry. It wasn't designed to be a house of fame. It wasn't designed to be a house of merchandise. It was designed to be a house of prayer, a house of worship, a house of encounter. And they looked at him and they said, oh, this is what Isaiah meant when he wrote, zeal from my father's house. My father's house has consumed me. I want to be filled with zeal for my father's house. Not foolish charisma, zeal for my father's house. Not height that looks like it's burning, no, zeal for my father's house. (laughs) Yes. Come on, come on, come on burning ones. Come on burning ones. Come on, burning ones, burn. Burn, God, tongues of fire. Tongues of fire, God. Tongues of fire. Burning ones, burn. Tongues of fire, God. Tongues of fire. Come and burn in me eternal flame. Burn in me eternal fire. Tongues of fire. Burn in me eternal flame. Shakara ba 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 ba. Kore ba 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 ba. Shekere. Kore ba 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 ba. Shokore ba 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 ba. Burn me, God. Fill me. Consume me. Our God is a consuming fire. He's not just one that wants to touch down. Everyone thinks that those tongues of fire were cute little Christmas ornaments that you can hang on a tree. I'm telling you right now that God is a consuming fire. He's a consuming fire. He wants all of you, not just moments with you. He wants to be a habitation in your life, not just moments of visitation. He doesn't want to be your summer camp. He wants to be your daily flame. Come on, Jesus. Consume us. Consume us, God. Come on, fresh dedication. Fresh consecration, fresh offerings, fresh offerings, God. We offer, we offer the place in our heart for you right now. We offer you our hearts. We offer you our minds. We offer you our soul, our emotions. We offer you our spirit, man. Fresh consecration, tongues of fire, eternal flame. Shakara ba ba ba. Repe kaya Ramba Baba Shakarabara Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name Burn in me Burn in me God Burn in me Burn out all the chaff Burn out all the chaff Everything that's contrary Everything that's not part of who you are Burn it out Burn it out. I just yield myself. I dedicate myself. I submit myself. I surrender. I yield. I lay myself down again. Fresh, God. Fresh. 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 Show me what hunger looks like. Show me what thirst looks like, God, for you. Jesus' name. 
eternal flame. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Kore ba 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 ba. Kore ba ba. Jesus name. Burning ones. Burning ones. Burning ones. Burning ones. We are the burning ones. We are the burning ones. We are the burning ones. Shatara Baba. Kare Baba Baba. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Zealots for who you are, God. Uh, people have made that dirty word, but it's not a dirty word. I am a zealot for who he is. I am a zealot for his heart. I am a zealot. I will be a zealot for who he is. Jesus name. It's not a dirty word. Jesus name. Jesus name. Koreba ba ba ba. Koreba ba ba ba. Koreba ba 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 ba. This will be a house of encounter. 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 Of habitation, encounter, and eternal flame. Shakara ba 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 ba. Kore ba 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 ba. Shekere de 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 de. So kore ba 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 ba. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Jesus name. Shakara da 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 da. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. See, the beautiful thing about zeal is that can be as quiet as a dove and yet as furious as a lion. It's just about the moment that you're in with Him. Sometimes it's a whisper. Sometimes it's a roar. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there's such a vision being poured out right now. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Mark us, God. Mark us. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We are the burning ones. We are the burning ones. Zeal for my Father's house has consumed me. Zeal for my Father's house has consumed me. Jesus' name. This is better than any sermon. This is better than any announcements. God, consume me. We're not having a sermon tonight. This is the sermon. Sorry that you don't get a five-point message, but this is better. (laughs) God, smash the religious framework in this land. Smash, decimate the idols of predictable religious ritual, program and itinerary. Smash it, God, and bring the burning ones Bring the burning ones, God. Bring those that are zealous for your house. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. 
as small as we are, don't despise what God can birth out of Bethlehem. I'm telling you. I really believe God's going to use us, especially through media. There is a voice that's going to go out to the nations and it's going to call the body higher. That's who we are. We're called to call the body higher. But we've got to burn. We've got to burn. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The model is changing, guys. Hearing the Spirit of God saying the model is changing. See, the last generation learned that if you could work a few miracles and you could share a couple of testimonies and you and you could, you know, be a little zealous and you could have the right worship, then you draw people. But but where are the burning ones as a result? Where are they? I'm asking. It's not a business model to use Hello. miracles to gather crowds. <laughs> that just needs to be said. I'm not speaking to this room. I'm speaking to the territory. I'm speaking to the atmospheric prince. Jesus' name. <laughs> sometimes people don't understand my preaching because they don't understand that sometimes I'm slapping the prince of the region around I'm not browbeating people in the room I'm whipping the thing in the atmosphere that's standing up in the territory let's give it a good backhand <laughs> my little Super Bowl ring Holy Ghost just poof <laughs> We are the burning ones. The season has changed. It's not enough to be able to work miracles. Antichrist and the false prophet, they're going to do that. They're going to do that. They're going to call fire from the sky like Elijah and deceive the nations. You're going to need more than just miracles. Although I'm not taking away from miracles. Keep healing the sick. Come Keep on. raising the dead. Keep multiplying loaves and fishes. But it's not enough. You're going to need to burn. <sighs> Telling you there's a shaking come to the, coming to the churches in this nation. There's a shaking coming to the churches in this nation. Those that have been built on comfort are going to be shaken to the roots. <laughs> the Spirit of God is saying that right now. I just feel the Spirit of God saying that. Those that have built their churches in comfort are going to be shaken to the roots in this next season. I'm not trying to proclaim judgment. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing God say. You can figure out the rest. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We are the hungry ones. Yes. We're going to burn and honour and steward and house the eternal flame. The eternal flame of God's fire, the eternal flame of God's passion, the eternal flame of God's holiness. We're going to burn it. We're going to run with it. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. Goodbye to the houses of religion. Goodbye to the dead cemetery houses. Goodbye to the fake frauds. Goodbye to those that have diverted those trying to find the way of light. Goodbye to you. Your roots are about to be shaken. Jesus is King. Jesus is King. Sha na 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 na. Sha na 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 na. Sha na 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 na. Ka re ba 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 ba. Shea. Ray and they sora Maya Robo Sora Ray and Gaia Jesus is King. It's a new season. Yes. It's a new season. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs>
right now just more waves yes. another wave God another wave of your goodness yes. come on Jenna behind the camera you can receive this too Woo. come on you have to learn how to stand in his presence you have to learn how to stand in it you have to learn how to stand in it you got to stand in it you got to stand in it you'll learn how to stand up in it stay up come on you'll learn how to stand in it you got to learn how to stand in it. Stand in His presence, Rita. Woo. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Learn how to stand in His presence. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. <laughs> Ooh, it's a new season. Yes. We don't need a big room. We just need a zealous one that's decided to be hungry for God. <laughs> We're going to make t-shirts. Zeal from my father's house has consumed me, Mr. Anton Watkinson. <laughs> We're going to make those t-shirts. We're going to make zeal for my father's house to consume me. That's our next season. We're going to be zealous for our father's house in a healthy way. And a healthy way looks like he gets all of me. <laughs> oh, you guys are too hardcore. No. Nope. I'm not hardcore enough. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus name <clears throat> Jesus name Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus See See there's greater atmospheres of his presence when you cross through veils like depths of water you've been in the water where you dive down deep and you go into different layers of water and it gets colder and colder it's like that in his presence except it gets stronger and stronger when you first started getting encountered by his presence you fell over right away but to go deeper you've got to learn to stand in his presence Whoa. that means you need to house more on the inside so you can go deeper. You can go deeper. Got to go deeper, wet. Got to go deeper. Got to be able to stand in it. Got to be able to stand in it. <laughs> Can't get knocked over by the foot soldiers. You got to be able to learn how to go deeper, wet. Jesus. Ooh. 
<laughs> Come here, Michael. Come on, man. We're going to get you walking so deep into the glory of God, Michael, that that stuff in your body just, it gets, it just gets zeroed out. I'm going to go through layers in God where that thing just can't stay. Jesus' name. <laughs> more 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 <laughs> more we have to go so deep in him that the infirmities can't go that deep that's the way to get healed is you go so deep in him that the infirmity can't keep up it breaks off as you fly closer to the sun <laughs> that's how you purify metal you take the silver so hot, the gold so hot that everything that's contaminant just burns off. You gotta go deeper, you gotta go hotter. What does it look like to get so hot, so zealous, so sold out, that all that stuff that's been keeping you at low levels just burns away? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> See, two disciples go up the steps of the temple and this beggar starts asking them for money. He ain't got nothing but they got something. He's got nothing, but they have what he needs. <laughs> Silver and gold we don't have, but I got something you need. <laughs> I got something you need. <laughs> yes. I got Lord. something you need. Yes. I got something you need. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Because there's a vessel on the inside of me. There's a vessel on the inside of me. And I've been deeper and there's more left over for someone else. It's flowing, Cameron. It's flowing. <laughs> I'm not a nut job. People that go to church and live a powerless Christianity are nut jobs. That's nut job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 Hey, nerves, wake up. <sighs> nerves. <laughs> Do your job. Jesus is king. <laughs> Jesus is king. <coughs> Jesus' name. Come on, Angela. We're going to learn how to stand in the glory of God together. <laughs> We're going to learn how to stand in His glory. Oh, no.
become zealous ones. <laughs> zealous ones. <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't know about you, Rita, but if you light a match in an ammunition dump, there ain't no putting that out. <laughs> <laughs> Light it up, Jesus. Fill us with an eternal flame of your fire, of zeal, of your goodness. See, that's the scary part. If you're living on the fence, you don't want to let them light that match because once that thing's on fire, there ain't no fire extinguisher going to put that out. Jesus name Jesus name come here kids all the kids quick I'm going to pray for the kids these kids are going to be more zealous than all of us come on I'm going to pray for you huh? Jesus fire on the kids fire of your glory just lift up your hands fire of your glory on the children Jesus and that's it that's it just receive Jonathan Woo. <laughs> Fire of the glory on you, Joel. Ooh, on you, Benjamin. Fire of God's glory. That's it. There we go. Ooh. Fire of God's glory on you, Ryan. Now, kids, now, kids I'm going to pray for you again right now. And when I do, I want you to close your eyes, and Jesus is going to show you some stuff, okay? See visions. You're going to hear what he says to your heart, okay? Jesus, mark these kids. Firebrands, flames, flames of fire that would run yes. your heart on the earth. Zealous ones. Mark Riley. Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus, Jesus' name. That's it. That's <laughs> Jesus just touching you, Riley. Jesus' name. <laughs> Sawyer, fire on you. Jesus name fire of the gospel fire of Jesus heart on your on your heart mark your God Jesus name see kids are drawn to this because it's natural they love the presence of God and they can receive it better than most adults we need to become like children that's why Jesus said unless you become like one of these little ones you might not get the kingdom We've got to get the kingdom in us that's it, Jesus, Mark, Mark Benjamin. Fill them full of fire. Let them hear your voice. Let them see your eyes, God. Let them see heaven. Show him your world. Let them have dreams and visions. More and more and more. That he would be a zealous one, a burning one for you. Jesus' name. Jonathan, mark him, God. Be a burning one that's so courageous for who you are that he would be full of your love, full of your fire and zeal all the days of his life. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Mark Joel, that he'd be a burning one branded with heaven Holy Spirit all the days of his life it'd be full of fire run all the days of his life Jesus name Jesus name is that all the kids that I pray for everybody okay cool <laughs> I love you I don't want to have a church that just dedicates my child one time I want to have a church that can dedicate my child every week into the glory of God how about you I want to be dedicated into his presence every single week i understand that some weeks are different than others but guys we're moving into a new era yeah i told you a few weeks ago that things were changing we're changing this is shifting if you can't tell god's serious and he's turning it up it's time for us to give all go put that calf on the altar just let it burn <laughs> Whew, have a little holy ghost barbecue of your old life just let it burn send it <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We've got to learn to stand in the glory so we can go deeper. That's the key. See, the problem is, is we just want Skittles and M&Ms and the Holy Ghost. And while that's beautiful, I want to go so deep that beings from heaven step through and start ministering to it. I want that. That's available. We've got to grow up as a people. We've got to go hungry. What does it look like for us to all of a sudden, just like a screen get peeled back and we look and glimpse as a, as, a, as a church house into places in heaven? I'm telling you that's available. I'm telling you, I know that's available. Jesus' name, mark us, God. And if you want that, just raise your hands. Come on, one more time, we're going in. I gotta have it personally before I can expect to see it corporately. They were all together in one accord. Guys, they spent 40 days sitting in a room like this together. They just, they just stayed in the house. They got, they got Uber Eats. They just stayed there. But they got so focused on heaven that eventually heaven couldn't refuse them. I wanna get to the point where heaven can't refuse us. What does that look like? It can't look like yo-yo Christianity where we're up one minute, down the next. What does it look like for us to get more and more sold out, more and more hungry, where zeal for my Father's house isn't just a story about Jesus, it becomes a story of my life, my heart, my focus, my mind, my vision. Zeal for my Father's house, ownership. Ownership has consumed me. I'm not just fascinated in Jesus, I'm consumed by Him. There's a difference. Molly, fire of God, come here Molly. We'll pray for Molly. Come on, new season for you, Mol. New era in your life. New era, Jesus' name, yes. Yes, firebrand her, God. Firebrand her. Oh, shakara baba. Respond, heaven, respond. Whoo, Jesus. Whoa. Ba, 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 ba. Take us deeper, God. Take us deeper. Take us deeper, yes. God. Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus' name. Jesus' name. (laughs) (laughs) What does it look like to have so much of God that Paul preaches to one in the morning and no one gets offended? Some dude falls asleep, falls out the window. He was sitting... He was sitting in the window, listening to Paul. Falls out the window at one in the morning because he just couldn't keep up. Fell asleep. Falls out and dies. They're like, no worries about it. We'll got it. We'll just restart him. We'll respawn him. We're just so lost in his presence. There's so much glory. It's okay. He's dead, but we're going to go pray for him. He's going to be right in a minute. (laughs) You guys guys read the book? Because that's what happened. Like this dude's literally trying to hang out in church. Paul's preaching the night away. All of a sudden, <coughs> homeboy just falls backwards. He just loses it all of a sudden. He just had that moment where he's just like full sent. His head just rocked for the last time. And he went back out the window, probably landed on his head. It was like mortal head injury. And they walk out and they find this train wreck. He snooze, he loosed, right? And Paul's like, don't worry about it, guys. This is going to be a great meeting. And they just laid hands on him all the brains went back into the guy's head and Paul put him back probably in a different seat and then the service then the service carried on (laughs) why is he telling us that story because it's another level of thinking in the atmosphere of God it's another realm of his presence Someone falls out the window in a church in America, 
everything stops, there's lawsuits happening and ambulance has been called. Hello? What does it look like to just lay hands on someone and the glory that's with us? The glory is God, by the way. It's His presence, His atmosphere. It's His abundant power. It's His goodness. It's manifested presence. The glory heals the guy and we just carry on with why Jesus was here. <laughs> we've got to, we're, without sounding new agey, we've got to ascend to a new level of existence in God. <laughs> <laughs> Sended <Ascended> beings. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just feel so just in love with Jesus and just lost in his presence and just invigorated. It is getting late, so I don't want anyone falling out the window. So we're gonna we're gonna just transition. We're gonna do some announcements and offerings and a couple of couple of things, and then we're gonna we're just gonna break up for the night. But but here's the thing. This is this is another fallacy that happens at church. Is that when the keys stop, people think that Jesus leaves. When we say Amen at the end of a service, we feel like we've turned God off. The same Jesus that was with you in moments like this is the same Jesus sitting in the passenger seat of your car as you drive home. He's the same Jesus that doesn't sleep and sits by your bed all night while you sleep. He's the same Jesus that's waiting in the kitchen and you come downstairs in the morning for breakfast. It's the same Jesus. Why do we turn him off? Let's invite him back. Yes, Jesus. Let's invite him back. That we'd be consumed with him day and night. It's the same Jesus that will invite you while you sleep into encounters in the night. You know, when you're sleeping and dreaming, it's the easiest way to access heaven's spiritual realm, not the demonic. That's why it's the time when also demonic dreams come is because that's how they attack you easy. You just have to learn how to rebuke that stuff in your sleep. Hello. See, and if we just, if we just pull on heaven a bit more, you're gonna start having more encounters. And, and instead of it being mundane and this drudgery, it starts becoming living. It starts becoming a daily culture, a daily journey, a daily adventure. And we go deeper and we learn to stand in His presence. And every time we have encounters, we go deeper because the last one was like the next carabiner point up the rock face. You guys understand what I'm saying? Every time I have an encounter, it's a little bit higher and I now have something further to pull off. It's a little bit, the, 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 the jar, the vessel inside of my spirit being has just enlarged a little bit more and I can, I can now house a little bit more of His presence. Stretch me every time you come, God. Don't just tickle me on what you did yesterday. Enlarge me, challenge me, stretch me, cause me to feel expanded by who you are in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Woo. Well, you guys can grab a seat. I'm just gonna take care of a few things. We're gonna we're gonna just take up the offering for the Lord, our, our tithes and offering. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Sunday we we've had two services close together, so Sunday I guess was last week's and today is this current week, so we're just we're just doing our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Jesus. I don't even want to preach. I think we've just preached. If you can consume me, you can consume my wallet as well. You can consume my finances. You can consume everything about everything I have. There's the stuff on the screen to let Jesus consume you. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I think that's all right, don't you? I think, I think we're going to make it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, when Elijah built you an altar, despite everything around him up Mount Carmel, you responded with fire. And today we bring our offering to you. We bring our tithes and we ask you to respond with fire. Come and consume us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Someone already got an answer from heaven. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. For some of you, it's going to be a challenge driving home tonight. For those of you that are entrepreneurs, I think we could start a little, you know, dial a driver business. Problem is, you'd get them saved, and then they'd come into service, and then they'd be out of a job. <laughs> Help. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we're starting to bring chairs in. We're going to be playing around with layouts. Isn't it nice to have... It's starting to feel like home, isn't it? You guys see the lighting truss? We've got, we've got professional high-grade um, lighting coming in, and we're going to really start moving towards building in more cameras. We're really going to focus on building a high cutting edge um, uh, production value film gear. Uh, we want to be able to have absolutely cutting edge um, film and video live streaming because we really believe that God's wanting to use us to touch the world. Yeah. And so this message needs to get out here. It does. It's too big for a small room like this. And so we're going to go after it. And there's a lot of things that are going to start rolling out in this next season. Okay, let's just stand to our feet. We're going to close in prayer. Jesus, you are awesome, and we love you. We thank you for your fire and your goodness. We thank you for what you're doing in this house. We thank you for all of our needs and all of our provisions being met. And that you would just start to cause dreams and visions and encounters and spiritual sensitivity to arise. In Jesus' name. I thank you for salvations, evangelism, God, for prophetic moments. I thank you, God, that you cause a boldness and a courage to rise up in us. I, cause that, I ask that you would cause a hunger for your word and a hunger for your presence and a hunger for prayer to burn in us in Jesus' name. And that would be coupled with a hunger for the loss. So we bless you, God, in Jesus' name. I thank you for blessing and protection over every house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Yay, God.